Hey, hi, hello. Um, I don't really know how to do this, so this is awkward. Okay, I'm Ella, in case you didn't know that. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're here from TikTok or Instagram, what's up? Um, but basically, I make custom shoes and I decided that it would be a good idea for me to start a YouTube channel to show you guys how I do it and um, like my tips and tricks and then also show you a little bit of my life. I will show you how to make your own custom shoes because I feel like being creative is really important. I don't really know what else to say in this intro, so... I guess I'll just get to painting. I forgot to mention what this video is about, which really is probably the most important part of an intro. So these um, shoes are retro Toronto Raptors themed vans. I'm just gonna kind of bring you along with me as I make them and just show you like my process personally of what I do and what works best for me. And then, um, yeah. That's basically it. I'll insert a clip of what they look like so you kind of know what you're getting into. So I do all of my canvas shoes with this Craftsmart acrylic paint. Right now I'm just mixing together the purple that's in the logo. So I'm mixing dark purple and light purple together to make that color. I'm also gonna mix in this Martha Stewart fabric medium. It's a two to one ratio, two parts fabric medium to one part of paint. Once I get the color that I like, I'm gonna start painting. When painting on Vans, I always start with the top stripes first. So I'm just going in with this purple color that I just mixed. I'm gonna be doing every other stripe purple. For the stripes, I just go in with a flat edged brush that just makes the edges look a little bit more cleaner and it's easier to get into those little spaces by the spot where the laces go in. Um, I always leave a little bit of room between the seams and between the edges just so that the lines look a little bit more crisp and overall i think it gives the shoe a lot more cleaner of a look since there are only two colors in this logo that is why i'm doing every other color it just pulls the shoe together if there were more colors then i would do a gradient on the stripes starting with the lightest color on the top and then the darkest color on the bottom Here's what the purple stripes look like so far. So now I'm just gonna go in with red. That's the second color in this Retro Toronto Raptors logo. So I usually do the side stripes first because it takes a couple more coats. And that way while the side stripe is drying, I can get started on the other stripes that are on the top of the shoe. I always fill the side stripe in with whatever color is gonna be the middle color, whether that is in when it's a gradient or when it's like this and it's every other color. I just think it looks a lot better and the shoe comes together a lot nicer. Once I paint in that first coat of the side stripe, then I'm gonna go in with a flat top brush again and just fill in the empty stripes that are up on the top. Most of the time, these top stripes don't need more than one coat but you are definitely feel free to do more than one coat if you want the color to be a little bit more bright. I usually don't unless the color looks really patchy or blotchy, but I usually just go in with the one coat and it usually looks fine, but definitely add more coats as needed to get the best color. Once the top stripes are all filled in with that red color, I'm gonna go in and do the second coat on that side stripe just to make the color look a little bit more opaque. So once all those stripes are done, I'm going to go in and fill in the back of the heel with white. I do this because I usually put the logo, the character, whatever I'm going to put on the back of the heel and it just makes it so that if you do for some reason mess up or your edges are a little bit messy, then you can go over them with white paint and it won't look funky because white paint isn't the exact same color as the white of the shoe. So. I just finished the first layer. I guess not first layer, like my first step. I like to get as much done in one sitting as possible, which is honestly probably not that healthy. I usually do this in like three parts. So first part is done. So like the top stripes and the side stripes and then painting the back of the heels white. I want all of that to dry before I start on the back, especially the back of the heels that I paint white that really needs to dry before I start sketching on whatever I'm sketching on the back. The pencil is gonna like mess up the paint if it's not completely dry. What was I saying? It's usually like sports teams in schools, I'll do drips too, but I again am just gonna wait for the side stripes to completely dry before I do that. 
I guess we'll check back in tomorrow and um, do the rest. Or at least the next part. Okay, so it's the next day. Um, right now, I'm just going over like the places that I might have messed up and wherever there's um, paint that shouldn't be there with white. Uh, like the stuff underneath, I don't know if you can see that. But this stuff underneath is fine because I'm going to do drips to cover that up. Like this should not be there. So I'm just going to go over it with white to make it disappear. Goodbye. A lot of people ask me, what do you do when you mess up? I just try not to. And then when I do, um, I just go over it with white to make it look like I didn't mess up. Everybody makes mistakes. Um, but we're just going to pretend that you don't. Full disclosure, painting over it with white doesn't always work, and so there are going to be mess up marks. Nothing is perfect. If you do make mistakes and you mess up and you can't reverse it, like that's totally fine. Overall, it'll still look good. Now that I've successfully covered up all of those stray marks that shouldn't be there, I'm going to go in and do the drips. I got sent these markers. I don't know. The glare is really bad. Okay. Pintar Art Supply and they have these paint markers. They're like a really good alternative to the Pasca markers. So check them out if you would like. But yeah, so I'm going to go in with, why did I put it away? I'm going to go in with the red one um, to do the drips because the stripe is red. So that is self-explanatory. So I'm just gonna shake up the marker and then I'm gonna get started. So first I just outline the drips with the marker and then I'm gonna just fill them in. It usually takes about two coats of the color to make it really pop and to make it completely opaque. If you do one coat, it's fine, but it's just not as vibrant or bright and there are gonna be some patches that aren't as dark as the rest. Okay, I forgot to film this part, but I sketched on the Toronto Raptors logo on the back and now I'm just filling it in with the correct colors. And then I'm gonna go in and outline in black. So, filled in, I'm painting her in now. And uh, yeah, this video has become increasingly unput together, unprofessional. A lot of words describe it, but I just finished this first shoe. I'll do put a better video. Now I'm on to the next. Here it is. The little sketch that I am about to fill in. Why am I talking like this? Okay, for the second shoe, I'll give you a more detailed look of what I'm doing. So when painting the logo, the character, whatever, I always do color by color. So right now I'm just painting in all the spots with purple and this is the same purple that I use on the stripes. The reason that I do this is that it just brings the stripes and the back of the heel together. So usually when I do a character on the back, I put the colors of the character, the logo, whatever, on the stripes as well because it just pulls the entire shoe together. So I just go in and fill in all of the spots where purple should be first, just so that I can get all of that out of the way. Same as with the drips, you wanna go in on each of these colors on the back with at least two coats, just to make the color look a little bit more opaque. So now that I filled in all the spots that should be purple, I'm gonna go in with red and just fill in all of the spots that should be red, which is just Basically the raptor, the arms, the face, the legs, all of that good stuff. I always sketch out every individual little thing just so I know what I'm filling in, but I usually end up covering part of it and then just figuring the rest out to be completely honest. This part doesn't actually have to be perfect because you are going to outline in black so that all of your messy edges will look crisp with the black outline. Even if you are like me and you sketch out every single little detail, it's okay if you mess up or go over the lines a little bit because you are going to be outlining in black and so no one is going to see that. So now that all the parts that should be red are red, I'm going to go in with this black. I usually do the darkest colors last, but in this case, this black part is going to be on the bottom, like a bottom layer color. And then I like to do bottom layers first. So that is why I'm going in with black before I fill in the actual Toronto Raptors words with light gray. 
Now that that black is filled in, I'm just gonna do the detailing of the R and then just going over with white some of the places that I might have put color that shouldn't be there. So that's in the logo, that's an outline of the logo. It's really wherever you kind of messed up a little bit. So now I'm just gonna make this gray color and this is gonna be the last color that I put in. Luckily, this logo did not have that many colors, so I'm just going to fill in the places that should be light gray, which includes the actual words of the Toronto Raptors. When doing letters, I like to do the letters that have straight lines first. I just think they're a little bit easier. Then I'm going to go in and do the O's because I feel like making O's, especially if there's multiple O's, all look the same and look the same size as the other letters are is a lot more difficult than doing letters with straight lines if that makes sense. So now that those top letters are done, I'm just gonna fill in the rest of the spots that should be gray with gray, including the eye and the tongue. So my phone actually died in the middle of me filming this without realizing, but what you missed basically is just filling in the actual Raptors word and then outlining and adding detailing in black. And so here's what the back looks like. So it's the next day again, phase three time, which is spraying, putting laces in, and all that good stuff. So this is the waterproof protectant spray that I use and I just take these shoes outside and give them a good spray down. I do about two coats just to make sure I coated the entire shoe and you're supposed to do this about seven to 10 inches away for the best coverage. Final step in the process is to put in laces that match the shoe. So I get all of mine off of Amazon and then you are all done. I will link all of the stuff that I've been using in the description box for you guys. Hey cuties, so hopefully this video helped a little bit. Um, if you decide to make your own custom bands, not that they have to be Toronto Raptors obviously, but if you do decide to make your own custom bands, please tag me. I love to see all the things that you create. Hopefully this video helped you out a little bit so that you can make your own. I know that a lot of people have the ability to do it themselves with just a little bit of guidance. So hopefully this helped, but yeah, tag me. I'll have my Instagram and TikTok linked down below. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this video. My next video is going to be kind of like a Q&A thing. So I'm just gonna be answering all of the top questions that I usually get in my TikTok and Instagram comments. So yeah, stay tuned for that. And again, thank you for watching this video. See you next time. <laughs>